My mama raised me right. Hey, it's Amy Register with Greater Than Rubies. Back from a year without making a video, and that's okay. Sometimes it takes a year to get your life together. I was gonna call this video Why Seventh-day Adventists Don't Drink, but then I realized several Seventh-day Adventists I know do drink. So I have to call this Why I Don't Drink and Why the Seventh-day Adventist denomination teaches abstinence from alcohol, but that was a really long title. So here is why I don't drink. I saw a lot of other YouTube videos with the title, is drinking a sin? Is drinking a sin? That's what a lot of people want to know. And the answer is, it can be. Full disclosure, I want you to know where I'm coming from. With my Seventh-day Adventist background, I grew up in a home where my parents don't drink and they taught us not to drink for a variety of reasons. I went to public school and so I grew up with almost all of my friends, including very good Christian friends, drinking. So there is always kind of that interest. And when I say I have never had a drink, I want you to know I have had NyQuil and that has alcohol in it. Also, I went to a family member's house one time. I think they had rum in the cupboard and the picture was really pretty and I wondered if it tastes good. So I put my finger in the bottle and licked it and it didn't taste good. So that's pretty much my experience with alcohol. So is alcohol, is drinking alcohol a sin? Is imbibing alcohol a sin? There would be some people, probably even those in my denomination, who would say unequivocally yes, Anytime you have alcohol, that's a sin. I don't actually know those people, but I'm sure they're out there. I don't know if it's just because I have a rebellious heart or if I'm just a trouble causer, but that always makes me want to know, like if alcohol is a sin, what about them raisins? Unbeknownst to many people, there's a little bit of alcohol lurking in every kitchen. That's right, folks. Whether it's homemade sauerkraut or a little kombucha or even a cylinder of sun-made raisins, anything that has any moisture that's been like fermented or even sitting around, there's gonna be a little alcohol in that. So think about that, you teetotalers. So the real question is, what does the Bible have to say about wine? There are about 250 Bible verses that say the word wine in them. And more if you consider the use of strong drink. What you gotta know is that the word wine is kind of a category more than a drink in the Bible. It's any, any juice, uh, fermented or unfermented, that's come from the vine. So you have new wine and then you have fermented alcoholic beverage. And the only way that you know which one it's talking about is context. So if it's giving a beware of this, it's always talking about alcohol. Nobody should beware of grape juice. And if it's talking about a blessing, then a lot of scholars believe it is talking about new wine or unfermented wine. I'm about to give you a two verse Bible study on what I believe the Bible is saying about alcoholic wine. Okay, are you ready? Let's go New Testament first. We're gonna go to Ephesians 5, 17 through 19. It says, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. So this verse is giving us a contrast of foolishness and knowing the will of the Lord. So to drink fermented wine, according to Paul in this passage, uh, is foolish, but being filled with the Holy Spirit brings this love, this singing of spiritual songs, gladdening of the heart. So that contrast between a life lived in, in foolish debauchery and a life lived in the Holy Spirit. The second verse I want to read you is in Proverbs. It's chapter 31, 4 through 7. It says, It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, or for rulers to take strong drink, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed. Um, you may say, Hey, Amy, I'm not a king, I'm not a ruler. But according to Peter, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. And so you are here to do God's will on earth. And that's a really really 
huge commission, a huge task. So the Bible is saying, if you are a man or woman of God, if you are in a position where God can use you, please don't drink, lest you, you know, get so wrapped up in a different life that you pervert justice and you forget to look after the afflictions of the poor and needy and, and forget the laws of God. It's contrasting the goals that God has for you as His leaders with a purpose on the earth and those who are mourning or in sadness or who have forgotten their way. And so that's my two verse Bible study on why I personally don't drink. Another reason I don't drink is less based on biblical mandate and more on the biblical principle that Proverbs talks about and that is that it's just not wise. That's really what it comes down to for me. Uh, for me and for a lot of Christians I know, it is the wisest thing possible for people who want to live their, their lives set apart for God. Not because God is angry at people who drink, but because the very nature of alcohol is addictive. When you look at some of the stats today, it's pretty staggering. One third of traffic fatalities are alcohol related. A lot of divorces happen. They relate some of the causes to alcohol, a lot of abuse situations. And that's not saying that alcohol is causing these things, but it certainly is a contributing factor. And as someone who really wants that abundant life that God promises, to me, I just thought, man, is it really worth a few glasses of really expensive, really rotten tasting grape juice? It's not for me. Alcohol. Some people say alcohol. <laughs>